Hello, St. Peter's. This is TJ Thomas, Minister of Music, coming to you from the parish hall where we've just received our harpsichord back from storage during construction. And I thought I'd give you a tour of the instrument here this afternoon. The instrument you see in front of you is a French double manual harpsichord. That's to say it has two manuals or two keyboards that the player can choose from. Uh, this instrument, like I said, is French and it was modeled after instruments built by Pascal Tasquin uh, around 1769 to 1770 in Paris. Uh, this instrument though was not built uh, right in that time. This is a replica instrument that was built by our friend Gerald Kaplan uh, in 1999 from a kit by Hubbard Harpsichords up in Framingham, Massachusetts. Uh, this instrument started life as basically an erector set uh, that comes in thousands of pieces and is assembled with the techniques that would have been used um, at the time Tascan built his instrument. So mainly uh, wood and glue is what holds this instrument together. There are no uh, metal joining parts in the construction. This instrument was generously donated to St. Peter's in the spring of 2017 by Michael and Barbara Aleutian as well as Jerry Kaplan, the builder, in memory of their loved ones. The two manuals uh, encompass three ranks. A rank is a set of strings that all sound the same. Uh, unlike the modern piano keyboard, our harpsichord manual only has 61 notes, and there are three ranks of uh, strings here in the instrument, two on the lower manual, and one on the upper manual. So that would make a total of 183 strings that you see here on the soundboard. Uh, the bottom manual is kind of what the, the main harpsichord sound. It's a very broad, um, pleasant to listen to eight foot tone. That's to say it's singing pitch, eight foot pitch. The top manual also has another eight foot uh, rank but it's a little uh, thinner and a little more nasal sounding than the bottom one is. Now, in addition to the eight foot that's on the bottom manual, there's also a four foot, uh, which I can engage by using this lever here to my left. And what you'll hear is not only the, um, the bit that I played before, just a single eight foot, but if I engage the four foot, you'll actually hear the eight foot and then the octave above it. If I press the same key real slow, you can probably hear both of them separate. There's the four foot, and there's the eight foot. If you play it quickly, you get them all together. These two manuals can be played separately like I just did, or they can be coupled together. There's a really ingenious mechanism that's entirely mechanical that provides for these manuals to be coupled. All I need to do is take my hands and push in on the top manual, just like that, probably only moves half an inch or so, and now when I go to play the bottom manual, um, you'll see the keys, the keys up there. actually move at the same time, which is pretty neat. When I play the top manual, it still only plays by itself. The other levers here, uh, the middle lever engages a set of felts um, here on the bottom eight foot manual. And here's the eight foot without the felts. And then with the felts engaged, what you hear is this. Almost sounds like a lute, or some people call it the harp stop. It's the gentlest sound that the harpsichord can make. If I take all the sounds together, the two eighths and the four, you get the, the fullest sound that a French double harpsichord can make. Modern pianos are tuned in what's known as equal temperament. That's to say, every half step uh, gradation on the keyboard is equal, or roughly the same distance apart. That's a relatively modern concept, however. Uh, 
back in the time that Tascam was building harpsichords, modern temper or equal modern temperament didn't exist. There were a myriad of systems that were used for tuning instruments. The uh, system that this harpsichord is tuned in right now is called Werkmeister III. And what that really translates to for musicians is that we have some keys of music that we play in that sound very in tune, actually more in tune than they would sound in equal temperament. Um, in this system of tuning, C major sounds nice and in tune, F is great, so is G. Once we start getting into the keys with more sharps and flats though, things get interesting in a hurry. Um, here is D flat. You can hear that's starting to get a little out of tune. Um, a flat, also kind of interesting. And the most uh, out of tune to our modern ears key would be the, the key of F sharp major. Not something that you'd want to play. Then again, music of the time when this harpsichord was built um, really only stayed within those keys that sounds good. Uh, that said, if I wanted to, I could retemper the entire instrument in another temperament simply by retuning all 183 of these strings with my tuning hammer. Another neat feature of this harpsichord is its transposing ability. Um, just like modern uh, equal temperament is a relatively new concept, so is the pitch center that we're familiar with today, the pitch center that most contemporary orchestras play in and certainly that modern pianos are tuned at is A equals 440. That's to say middle A vibrates at 440 hertz a second. Uh, back in the Baroque era when this instrument was very popular, uh, the pitch center was a good bit lower, actually a, a full half step lower. So A would more or less be equal to 415. Um, now, if I wanted to take the whole instrument down to 415, I could either retune all 183 strings down a half step uh, to play with period or, or early Baroque instruments, or I've got a neat option on this harpsichord in that the keyboard will actually slide. So there's a, a piece of wood that I take out um, over here. I won't do it now since the instrument's not prepared for it, um, but I take this out and I actually slide the entire keyboard um, up half a step. So then what was C, actually becomes C sharp, and then I can play closer uh, to the pitch that modern instruments play with. This is especially helpful uh, when you're playing a concert and you've got instruments that are tuned at, at both temperaments for different, or excuse me, both um, pitch centers for different pieces, and you can more or less do it on the fly. So it's, it's really helpful. It makes the instrument much more versatile. Uh, you know, it plays Baroque music quite convincingly, but I can also um, make the shift up to A440 and play continuo uh, for a performance of Handel's Messiah at modern pitch with no problem at all. Probably the biggest difference between uh, this harpsichord and a modern piano is the way in which the instrument makes sound. Uh, the harpsichord makes sound by taking a jack, and you'll see in a picture here, um, a jack, there, all the jacks are underneath this jack rail. And the jack has in it a little piece of uh, plastic, which would have originally been bird curl, but we use uh, Delrin plastic today. And that plastic actually plucks the string. Um, as I press the key, that sends the jack up, and the plectrum plucks the string. And then on the way back down, there's a little uh, spring mechanism that allows the plectrum to pass back over the string, but without plucking the string again. Again, that's quite a departure from modern pianos, which take a hammer uh, and actually strike the string to make the sound. So on a modern piano, you have quite a bit of control with touch. Uh, the louder, harder that you press the key, the louder the piano plays. That's not so with the harpsichord. Um, if I press the key any harder, the string does not pluck louder. It's only plucked at one volume level. So to get uh, gradations of dynamics or um, volume on the harpsichord, I actually wind up either uh, playing more notes or I start coupling the manuals together and adding and subtracting uh, the ranks of strings to make the contrast that I need. Not only is the harpsichord a beautiful sounding instrument, but it also looks beautiful. You can see the outside case is, has been painted 
and glossed in many layers of beautiful paint, as well as um, this really lovely uh, gold leaf that goes all the way around the perimeter of the instrument, as well as outside on this lovely um, apron stand. However, the real gem of the decoration of this instrument is actually on the inside. Um, inside, the instrument was hand-painted with birds and uh, insects, and most notably flowers. It's really quite stunning uh, to look at. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of our 1999 uh, French double harpsichord built by Gerald Kaplan. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a nice day.